Night Terrace, the sci-fi comedy audio series. Hang on, audio, but this is video. Why are we on video, Ben? Well, we thought we'd give away the first episode of the first season of the show for free. <gasps> you mean they can hear the entire first episode of Night Terrace season one for free? Yeah, that's all right. Yeah, the first of Brilliant. all eight episodes from season one, because we're doing a second season of eight episodes, Hooray! and we're doing a Kickstarter campaign to raise the money to pay for it. When does that start? On March 27th. Brilliant. So you can find out all about the series at nightterrace.com. You can download a copy of the first episode if you want to listen to it offline. Or stick around and watch it here. Or listen to it here. Yeah. Mm, brilliant. Go on. Three minutes to steep. You've called Anastasia Black. I'm not here. Dr. Black, we need you! Only you can help us! You have a whole department who can help you. You don't need me. The robot is out of control! And it's growing in size! I'm sure you can all take care of it. Oh my god! It's got a laser parasol! In my day, we wouldn't have made so much fuss over a simple giant robot. Message deleted. Anyway, I've retired. You have 23 new messages. The enigmatic Dr. Ron is using time-travelling samurai to attack the nuclear complex. They have hybrid autopirana mutants with them, Dr. Black. We can't... Message deleted. The slugs are telepathic. Oh, my God. They're in my mind. Message. You have 24 of your Earth hours before we replace your ozone layer with tin foil. Messi. It's Horatio again. I may have just caused a time paradox that's going to destroy the world. It's usually a bad sign when you rewrite your own history, yes? Anastasia? Hello? Norwegians are just Swedes in hats. Hey, it's Horatio. I just figured out how to travel through time. Why won't you pick up? Messi. All messages deleted. Right. Lovely. Oh, what now? Hello, would you like to save money? No! Then you're in luck. PowerG Enico is the smart way for you to save money while still enjoying your power consumption lifestyle needs. Move your foot out of my door. PowerG Enico can move all sorts of feet out of your door. Did you know you can save as much as 2.5% on your current power bills? Not only did I not know, I don't even care. PowerG Enico harnesses the planet's natural resources and converts them into an efficient, environmentally friendly toxic sludge. Get off my property. I'm not here. The bees! The bees! You still have an answering machine? Please leave, Eddie. How did you know my name was Eddie? It's on your name badge. How did you know I was wearing a name badge? Well, if that's all... No, please, look, just let me tell you about our deals. No. I need to sign up at least one person today, and most people just throw things Leave. at me. Oh, look, your house has a nameplate. That's kind of cool. Your house is called Night Terrace, which is a sort of a pun, isn't it? I mean, even though a terrace should be a bunch of houses, and your house is all by itself, and I do tend to ramble on when I'm What's happening nervous. to the sky? Oh, they said today we might see some odd atmospheric effects. Uh, according to the news, it's an unprecedented conjunction of a solar storm, a lunar eclipse, a meteor shower, a geomagnetic reversal, and look, I found a 50 cent piece! It's very loud, isn't it? And pretty! Get inside! I'm not sure Power Giannico's public liability insurance allows me to enter your residence or dwelling. Night Terrace, Episode 1, Moving House by John Richards. Are you all right? What happened? It sounded to me like an Einstein carton scammer kibble gravity bubble forming an Einstein Rosen bridge before collapsing. Oh. But that's just an Einstein Munchausen guess. Let's have a look outside. 
Well, this is annoying. Look at the sky. Yes, it's pink. And the suns. Well, they seem fairly normal. But there's three of them. Oh, yes. I see your point. There's three suns. But normal suns, so that's good. And a breathable atmosphere, so again, thumbs up. Three suns. Eddie, are you freaking out? Yes. Because that's not going to be very helpful, is it? So I'm going to give you 10 seconds to get it out of your system, and then you'll need to be less useless. Do you think you can do that? No. Right. Start freaking out now. Oh, my God, there's three suns and a pink sky, and the buildings are all domes. And where did your street go? And if you sign up now, you can get a further 2% discount on your two, first bill. One. Are those trees singing? And we're done. OK? Mm -hmm. Good. Now. Eddie, listen to me carefully. I think something quite unusual has happened and we are no longer in Melbourne. Are we in Queensland? Does Queensland have a pink sky and three suns? Which part of Queensland? Any part of Queensland. I've never been to Queensland. I think we have to assume we're not in Queensland, or anywhere on Earth for that matter, but that somehow my house has travelled in space. House has travelled... Space? Yes, based on the available information. What are you talking about? Well, can you think of a more reasonable explanation? I can think of several. Maybe I fell down and hit my head and this is all a massive coma fantasy. Or, or your house was airlifted into the middle of a weird desert, which is something I saw on Grand Designs once, so it could happen. Or maybe every house in your neighbourhood got destroyed in a, a nuclear explosion and yours was left standing for some reason. And we're not actually seeing three suns, but light reflecting off three hot air balloons that would... Are those... Aliens coming towards us on a hovercraft? Fine, we're on another planet. Well, I suppose really they're locals and we're the aliens if you think about it. Space travel can be irritatingly semantic. There are aliens on a hovercraft. Keep it together, Eddie. Greetings. Welcome to Tranquilos, where the skies are always clear. We, we hope, hope you enjoy, enjoy your stay. stay. Thank you. We're happy to be here. I am Anastasia Black, and this is my companion, Eddie Surname. Jones. My companion, Jones Surname. Eddie Jones. Really doesn't matter. We would like to invite you to join us in a trip to our nearby Habitat Dome, where you will receive a complimentary fruit basket and hopefully survive the heavy bombardment which is imminent. Bombardment? You may want to come quickly. Did you only have that number of arms when you landed, or have you been injured? No, just the two. We get by. Oh, good. Let us perhaps hurry back to the habitat where we can sip cocktails and possibly escape the near certainty of death. Oh, yes, let's! Get on the transport, quick! Now! Yes, now is good. Hurrah for now! Hurrah! Oh! Vraxnol! I hate to disturb you while you drive at a clearly unsafe speed back to the only chance we have for life, but I suspect I have been hit by something. She's bleeding. Eddie, apply pressure to the wound. I do apologize for the inconvenience. I may just have a little lie down for a moment. Not much longer, Vraxnel. Soon there will be a relaxing oasis of hospitalness and a worry-free stay away from the drudgery of descending weaponry. She's still bleeding. I, I think. Is, is this blood? Rats not to base. Please open pot four and have mimosas and medical assistance standing by. Well done, Rational. Welcome to Habitat 6. Mind your head! Hello, and welcome to Habitat 6. We hope your stay will be non-terminal. Uh, this is our medical officer, Vraxnol. Uh, she will be happy to be of assistance should you be horrifically injured during your stay. Hello. Uh, and here are your floral garlands. Will she be all right? Yes. She has lost a lot of blood, but we'll fix her up and she'll be tickety-boo. Orderlies, please take Vraxnol to emergency sick bay 14. I think there's still room in that one. I'm sorry for our ignorance, but... Where are we and what exactly is going on? You do not have a reservation. Luckily, we still have free chalets at the moment. Some of which are conveniently engulfed in flames. No, we don't know where we are at all. We arrived by accident. Ah, you were forced down by the shelling? Something like that, yes. This is Tranquilos, the pleasure planet, where the skies are always clear. We hope you enjoy your stay and will take advantage of our amenities. Many of which are on fire. I am Vraxnel, and this is also Vraxnel. Hello. 
Vraxnol is a title of some sort on this planet. Uh, no, it's just a very common name. It's a, it's a little awkward, uh, to be honest. But we will do whatever we can to make your stay survivable. Survivable from what? What's happening out there? Tranquilos has the unique distinction of being the universe's best leisure resort currently under attack. Yes, it is conveniently located next to shelling and explosions. You won't get that at Leisureland, Peter. But who's attacking you and why? Well, it's a funny story. But we don't exactly know. Don't know? No, because while our attackers have long-range missiles, tracking and guiding systems... We have many tennis courts. Many, many tennis courts. Some of which are on fire. This makes Tranquilos an excellent place to enjoy an afternoon of tennis, but not so good for determining exactly who's trying to kill us from space. And you don't have any defense shields? Any weapons? On Tranquilos, we have always believed that a smile and a handshake can overcome any ill will. Uh, until now, of course. <laughs> oh, yes. Until now. Well, I'm very sorry about your situation, but I'm afraid we can't stay. We need to get back to our... craft. We can't leave yet. There, there is still bombing. And we have a buffet. The shelling will last some time, uh, but in the meantime... Buffet? Yes, buffet. Please? It, 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 it's a very nice buffet. Fine. Take me to your buffet. More sweet and sour tiramisu, sir or madam? A little more, thank you. Please enjoy. I didn't realise how hungry I was. Yes, near death often seems to work up an appetite. It's a survival instinct your body craves. Mm -hmm. oh, this is amazing. Sweet and sour tiramisu, apparently. So this is what you do? What? Weird space stuff, aliens being shot at. What I used to do, I'm retired. So why do you have a house that travels in space? I didn't know I did, I only just moved in. The real estate agent never mentioned it? Oh, you know what they're like. And do you think you could get it to go again? We could travel around in it? Hold on, all I want is to get back to my cosy suburban retirement. And right now, my way back is out there being bombed. So the 17 things I don't understand are- Pick one! So the one thing I don't understand comes in 17 parts. Part one, if they're aliens, how can I understand what they're saying? And how can they understand me? Is it some sort of telepathy? Or do you have a cool translator device? Eddie, they're speaking English. They're speaking English? Yes. I thought you might have noticed. Why are they speaking English? I don't know. Perhaps they learned it from our radio transmissions. But English is spoken universally. It's pretty much the lingua franca of space. All aliens speak English? Well, sometimes the uppity ones will pretend they don't, but if you talk loud enough, they'll understand. Oh. Well, so what are you going to do for these guys? What do you mean? Well, how can you help them with the being bombed and everything? It's not my problem. But you do this stuff. Dear, do you seem to have trouble understanding the word retirement? But if you don't help them, who will? Maybe they can help themselves. Or maybe you can. Seriously, people need to learn to look after themselves. Anyone can do what I do. But they're basically hotel workers, and I'm just a student who sells things door to door to pay for little luxuries like rent. But a student of what? You must have skills. I'm majoring in contemporary dance. That's probably not going to help us here, is it? No. Of course, the longer the bombardment continues, the less chance you'll have of seeing your house in one piece. All right. I'll see if there's something I can do. No promises. You wait here, though. It'll be safer. Probably. Maybe you can practice your jazz hands. Well, good. You do that. I'll stay here. Yes. Have you tried the fondue? Oh, I didn't see you there. Do you work here? Do I work here? No. So you're a guest? A guest? Yes. In a way. In a way, I am. Well, Grace, uh, good to meet you. And in a way, not. I have a message for you, Eddie Jones. Surname? Uh, no, Jones, damn! You must stay with her. You must look after each other. Only then will you get home. Who are you? My name is not important. I didn't ask if it was important. You need not know my name. Why? Is it a secret? My name is irrelevant. It's just a name. I don't know why you're making such a fuss about it. My name is a pseudonym. No, Sue. Denim. Sue. D. Nim. Sue. My name is Sue. It's Sue. Well. It's been great, but I really have to... One more thing. Whatever. If you're lost and need to move forward, 
Always look to where the water flows. I tell you what, I'll go get a pen so I won't forget. Sue? Sue? Where did you go? Well, that was annoyingly vague. Raxnol, what's the status report for the habitat? Uh, atmosphere is stable, hydroponics optimal, doilies are acceptable. Raxnol, what news do you have? Raxnol has reported that the skies above the remains of the Allison Alibabe Morris Memorial Yoga Retreat have grown dark. It would appear there is a massive number of missiles headed towards us, much bigger than any previous attack. We should evacuate the control center. I'm sorry, sir or madam, but guests are not allowed in the control center. I'm here to help. I think you might need it. But we are here to help you. You need not lift a finger on Tranquilos, but simply relax and enjoy the glorious vistas of the firestorms and destruction. Did we mention the buffet? I do... did these sorts of things. Alien invasions, mad scientists, psychic bees. Well, I don't think we want psychic bees. Things are bad enough as it is, if we're honest. And I can help you with this. You must have some sort of weapons, defense shields, anything. Did we mention the buffet? Do you have anything we could modify? Nuclear reactors, shuttlecraft, nothing with that much power. Uh, we also have a, a hydroponic bay, a laser array, a fleet of golf carts. Laser array. Yes, on weekend evenings we bring the shape of pink love hearts into the sky. We can also do your corporate logo. For an additional fee? Yes. Not helpful? No. Uh, solar collector, weather control, a croquet mallet. Weather control? How does that work? Oh, it's fairly basic. Uh, we just have nanogels in geostationary orbit. Uh, should bad weather be likely, the gels can multiply to absorb moisture. It never rains on Tranquilos. Except death from above. <laughs> oh, yes, it rains death from above. But that's new. Can you move the nanogels? Stop them being geostationary, but make them orbit the planet? Well, yes, uh, but that would create potential hazards for the... For... Oh. Yes. I need you to generate as much gel as you can and get it orbiting as fast as possible. Go! I told you to stay in the dining room. I know, but they gave me a doggy bag, so it's okay. What are you doing? I have a plan. Do you know what the Kessler syndrome is? This is one of those sorts of questions you ask out loud so you can answer it yourself and look clever, isn't it? In 1978, NASA scientist Donald J. Kessler suggested that Thought we were so. building up so much junk in Earth's orbit that soon it would be impossible to launch spacecraft without them hitting something. Junk? Spent rocket stages, bits of old satellites, discarded burger wrappers, whatever. There's a lot of stuff up there. Back there? Somewhere. Anyway, Kessler said that the junk would end up forming a shield that would stop rockets getting out. Even the smallest screw would be travelling so fast that a minor collision would be devastating. OK. But if it stops things getting out, it would hopefully also stop things getting in. Raxnell estimates we only have minutes to impact. This plan will not succeed. You should abandon the control centre now. Hopefully. Possibly. Perhaps. Maybe I was hasty in suggesting we get involved. Everything is programmed into weather control. Now all we have to do is activate this main switch. Stop right there. What is the meaning of this, Raxnall? You know full well that energy weapons, while not expressly forbidden, are solely frowned upon in the control center. Move away from the weather controls. What's that sound? What's going on, Raxnall? This is the sound of our new masters. They will be landing on Tranquilos very shortly. Landing? In person? But the floral arrangements need refreshing. But first, there will be a final bombardment destroying all but this control center, wiping out everything and everyone else on this planet. But who are these invaders, Vraxnel? What do they want? I don't know. No, the other Vraxnel. Oh, of course. That makes sense. Answer the question, Vraxnel. The invaders are a cosmic weed. They colonize planet after planet, breeding in the millions, using the resources and then moving on. They're hideous, heartless and unstoppable. So why are you helping them? On Tranquilos, I existed only to serve the handful of visitors who deigned to stop here. I was nothing. A simple servant. The invaders have promised me that in the New World Order, I will be more than a handmaiden to a few tourists. I will be handmaiden to a whole planet! I will be subservient to millions, to this whole galaxy! I will bring them drinks, fluff their pillows, and I will have power over none of them. None of them at all. You're mad, Raxnol. 
They'll never go through that deal. Oh, I'm mad, am I? Am I? Am I? Uh, Mademoiselle Noir, uh, parlez-vous français? Oui, pourquoi? No, une distraction, s'il vous plaît. Why have you stopped speaking English? It would be gratefully appreciated if guests resume speaking in English. Call yourself a five-star planet? Just look at these floors. They're filthy. And call that a well-ironed antimacassar because I certainly oh, don't. I, I'm, I'm so sorry. And, and, and on behalf of all of us... Grand Chate! Oh, grab her gun. I have it. Ooh, what was that? It's called a Grand Jeté. It's a ballet leap. And it turned out my dance training was useful after all, actually. Don't push it, Eddie. Control, the missiles are in visual range. We only have moments left. Oh, could you do something clever now, please? Fraxnel, activate the weather control. Never. The, the other Fraxnel. Activated. Will this work? Let's find out. This will impact you in three, two... We are still not dead. Only one of the many exciting activities on offer. Orleys, take Vraxdol away. Lock her in the day spa. No, not the day spa. Not the day spa! Commander Vraxnel, Commander Vraxnel, what has happened, Vraxnel? Vraxnel isn't available, I'm afraid, and neither is Vraxnel or any of the other Vraxnels. This planet is protected. Any attempt to land will shred your ships like a guest's abs after a visit to the fully appointed Pilates Studios. Oh, God, this place is getting to me. Leave now while you still can. Tranquillus out. You have saved us. You have saved us all. How can we ever thank you? Fruit basket? There is a slight catch, I'm afraid. While your weather control shield will stop the invaders getting in, it will stop other guests from arriving too. In fact, no one will be able to enter or leave Tranquillus until you can stop the nanogels, which could take a few years. Oh, that's fine. The staff could do with the holiday, and, and it will be an excellent chance to do some remodelling. We can finally put in that mini-golf course I've been dreaming of. I hear that some planets have ones you play under a black light. The balls glow. That sounds great. I know. Fraxnel, the invaders are calling us again. And now they're close enough to get visual reception. We can see the face of our enemy, if you wish. Yes, put them on screen. Let us finally see the hideous monsters that have made our lives a living hell. On screen. People of Tranquilos. You may have delayed your conquest by the human race, but you have not defeated us. Human race? Oh, you can't take us anywhere. We will leave your planet, but do not think we will forget this. Eddie, I think this is our cue to leave. Tranquilos will live on as a curse among our people. Each new generation will be told of your infamy. And we're leaving a terrible review on TripAdvisor. <laughs> How rude! Vraxnol, is it just me, or did the human invaders look an awful lot like the... the... Oh. Where did they go? Oh, I'm dreading the feedback cards, I can tell you. I don't understand. How can the human race be invading other planets? can't even make the ticketing machines work on the trams. I think the simplest answer is that the house didn't just move us in space, it also moved us in time. That's the simplest answer. I'm sure if the estate agents had known, the price wouldn't have been so reasonable. Why does this stuff not freak you out? And my guess would be that the house can move by itself. The unusual combination of events may have triggered the mechanism, but it must be part of the house somehow, which means there must be a way of controlling it. What are you doing? The house must have controls, or at least an on button. How do you start a house? Look to where the water flows. If you're lost and need to move forward, always look to where the water flows. What? Something someone irritating told me. The taps! Try the taps! It's working! We're travelling! Isn't this exciting? We could go anywhere. No, it is not exciting. It is very annoying. I just want to go home. You are home. You said you majored in contemporary dance. What did you minor in? 
transdimensional physics. Well, I'm sure the dancing will come in handy. Cup of tea? Goodbye, Eddie. Goodbye, Anastasia. I'll be seeing you both soon. Soon. Uh, I'm sorry, were you talking to me? Oh, no. But could I have another pillow in my chalet, please? Certainly, Madame Morceau. I'll take care of that now. Soon. Night Terrace Moving House was written by John Richards. It starred Jackie Woodburn as Anastasia Black, Ben McKenzie as Eddie Jones, and Petra Elliott as Sue. With Toby Trust Love as Vraxnell, Cal Wilson as Vraxnell, Dave Lamb as Vraxnell, Amanda Buckley as Vraxnell, Lee Zachariah as Vraxnell, and Kate Wolf as the Human Commander. Additional voices provided by Nicholas Briggs, Virginia Gay, Michael Ward, Andrew Hansen, David Ashton, Karen Pickering, and the cast. Theme music, sound design and audio engineering by David Ashton of Sample & Hold Studios. Night Terrace was created for your comfort and enjoyment by Ben McKenzie, David Ashton, Petra Elliott, John Richards and Lee Zachariah. Samantha Streeter and Robin Bland were our associate producers. The series is produced by Ben McKenzie and head writer John Richards. <laughs>